Welcome back to the Don and Gino Real Estate and Finance Show right here in your hometown station, AM 1220 KHDS. And remember, our goal is always to guide you to personal and financial wealth. You're back with the Don and Gino Real Estate and Finance Show right here in your hometown station, AM 1220 KHS. And we're back with uh, our good friend, Mr. Lou Esmond with Esmond Law. And I love that we were just talking about that you're helping businesses, especially with a tax reform. No, you don't do, you know, tax advice. I do not render tax advice. But businesses and the small business person are adjusting how they're doing it. And I love that you're working side by side with CPAs uh, to help set up their businesses. Yeah, you have to remember, 35 years as a finance professional, certified bankruptcy specialist, one of 162 in the state. Um, I have a degree in finance and accounting from University of Albany. I know how to read a spreadsheet. I can see what's going on. I've studied economic history. And so I, I come at these things from a very different perspective than the rest of my colleagues. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I love your saying that I'm going to help you, uh, teach you how not to fail, or at I, least set you up for that. I counsel my clients on how not to fail. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, just something so simple as raising capital. I mean, that's something that businesses need to do. Some right. of them don't have their own capital, and they need to raise capital. There's a lot of different ways to do that, right? You can get yes. it through debt. You can... You can do it through shares. You can do it in numerous different ways, and that's a very important thing is how are you going to finance the growth of a growing company? Right, and we, and we analyze all that. And you can do it through marriage. You <laughs> I didn't say how to acquire debt. <laughs> or, or dispose of it quickly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, so speaking that's of That's how you that, dispose of income. Since we're speaking about debt, and we do have one of the 162 bankruptcy specialists in California out of like – 100,000 lawyers. 300,000. 300,000. Wow. <laughs> so there's only a few that are a certified bankruptcy specialists. So it's funny. We talk so much business with you on a regular basis. And then uh, and I'm like, so what is going on in the bankruptcy world? That's still going on, you know? And you're like, uh, of course, always goes on. Yeah, you yeah. would think in a full employment market where everybody's employed, uh, wages are finally starting to rise. Thanks to goodness we have a little bit of equity wage inflation, in equity in homes. Things are good. Bankruptcies are pretty much gone, right? Well, they're down 80%. Okay. You know, but, but because but, of all that you said, it's changed. Yeah. The, so <laughs> so, so you, the bankruptcy fines are down 80%. Uh, the trustees still have their staffs. The trustees' lawyers still have their staffs. They have lots of time to look over everything. Who's uh, a trustee? Everything. Uh, trustees are, are panel trustees who have been um, vetted and appointed by the United States trustee. Well, I'm just saying if somebody cases. follows a bankruptcy, whether They may not know what a trustee yeah, is, Yeah, so right? oh, let's so start with basics. Seven okay. versus 13, and who are the trustees, and why do, why so do they, they that represent? So in a, in a Chapter 13, the trustee is responsible for determining that there is uh, enough income to pay creditors over a three- to five-year period through a Chapter 13 plan. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, And the difference between your net after-tax income and your gross monthly living expenses, we refer to that as disposable income. Those are the monies that go to pay uh, a Chapter 13 trustee into a plan. She turns around and disperses those to creditors. Okay? Typical Chapter 13 has been where someone is in default on their home loan, and those monies are used to cure the default on the home loan over a three to five year period of time, very simply stated. Uh, chapter 7 trustee, their responsibility is to um, investigate the, the bankruptcy estate, uh, which is created when you file for bankruptcy, and determine whether or not there are any assets that can be liquidated and the proceeds used to pay creditors. Chapter 7 trustees who hire Chapter 7 trustees attorneys, who hire Chapter 7 trustees accountants, are very hungry today because the filings are so far down. Okay? They used to get $65 a case, and they'd sit there and have thousands of cases, which now they don't have. So now they're really having the time to really look into things. Do they get compensated more if they find things? Oh, yeah. They get percentage. They, oh, okay. They, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I'm just asking. You know, yeah, there, there, there's, that, right? there's a statutory uh, fee schedule as to how much the Chapter 7 trustees get based upon the assets that they recover. It's uh, kind of like, let's say, 5%. Uh, and the attorneys can get whatever the court approves, which is usually whatever they ask for. So if they find assets, uh, it could be pretty much of a gravy train because they'll suck up all of the, the proceeds and there'll be really nothing for creditors. Yeah, so, uh, you know, one of the things, <laughs> so I would assume that that's a industry in which, um, I'm going to tiptoe around this a little bit, but fraud is probably rampant. 
and people that have assets try to hide assets before they go into bankruptcy in some way, shape, or form. Or income. You know, people, people, people always think, I, I call it the Yogi effect. Remember Yogi the bear? Mm -hmm. He was smarter than the average bear. I call it the Yogi effect. Everyone thinks that they're smarter than the average bear. Okay, they all think that, that they're going to think up some way to, uh, to get around the system that no one else has ever thought about. And um, wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Plain and simple, just wrong. Wrong, right? Um, oh, I'm going to transfer this to my uncle. No, you're not, because the trustee is going to go in and recover that as a fraudulent transfer. All right. Uh, well, I'm owed all this money by my company, and so I'm going to pay myself first. Wrong. That's a preference. The trustee will go back a year and recover all those monies you've paid yourself. So you, you really need to work with a, a professional who understands what the law is, who can counsel you. I, I have clients I've counseled for three, four, five years, uh, whether or not we're going to file a bankruptcy or not. Um, and what we're going to wind up doing. Well, what's nice is what I'm hearing is instead you could easily sign them up, take the fee for handling the bankruptcy without doing the analysis first. I, I refuse to do that. And then basically later go, hmm, I think your case is going to be a problem after you've already paid thousands yeah. of dollars. Pretty so common. You hear that all the time. Yeah. yeah. So, so what we do is we require the client. Well, we'll go through the process of setting up a bankruptcy filing. Right? But I want... I want to see from the client all these documents and documentation that I'm going to look at to see whether or not we're going to have a problem with the trustee. Okay. So here I am going to, I am going to jump in here because this is a lot like our industry. And, oh, and we've yeah, sent clients nice. to Lou before and they've said, oh, he wants all this stuff, right? <laughs> and you know what the truth is? That we experience the same thing we in the mortgage thing. business. We're the ones that want all this stuff. You can walk into a, other financial institutions and walk out with a pre-approval letter without the stuff. Yeah. It doesn't you mean you're going to get your keys, though. This is right. a rocket. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> so you can get, you know, what ends up happening is you end up having surprises and problems in the middle of a transaction. Right. And that's what we look to avoid at Skyline Home Loans. Lou, that's what you look to avoid, and that's called experience. Well, you want to avoid surprises. Nothing worse than surprises. Well, and I try to get the documents, documentation from clients so that I can do an analysis and I can, it's a risk analysis. You know, this is what you have done. Okay? Now, if we file now, this is likely what will happen. However, if we wait and we file next year, your risk will be reduced by this much. And then it's just a matter of you know, holding the client's hand, getting through the process, and very often I may say, you know, I don't think a bankruptcy is for you. There's just too much risk. So what's the alternative? Oh, we do debt negotiations. Because okay. a lot of times, like you said, Good people, question, you know, like, like, like you said, you know, inc income is up, equity is there, and so we'll say, okay, we'll, we'll tee this up for a bankruptcy finally so we know what all your creditors are. And so we know what your assets are, we know what your income is, we know what your expenses are, and then we'll say, well, Okay, we're going to take each of these creditors, we're, we're going to put them in order of the, the, the lowest amount that you owe to the highest amount you owe, and we're going to methodically go through each one of them and negotiate with each one. You know, as we negotiate, we're going to tell you, this is the deal we've struck, get in here with a check, so we can, and we go through methodically down the list, uh, negotiating with the creditors. Typically, you know, it's between 25 and 45% of the face value of the debt. Which they're excited to get rather than a Chapter 7 just wiping it clean. Well, if you can do a Chapter 7 and wipe it clean, that's great. But if you but have if the assets and income, you have the assets and income, and you're running risk of a trustee selling off your home or, or worse, yeah. you don't want to go there. Well, not right. only that, but let's talk about one more thing, right? A 13 takes three to five years. Three to five and, years. And then two years after that to be able to get a home loan. So you're talking about a, a five to a seven-year project. If you settle the debt, now don't forget, when you're paying a th on a 13, you're probably still going to pay 25 to 45% anyway. No, not no? 13s I do. Oh. No. No, no. Most of the 13s are to cure the default on, the, on a home loan mm -hmm. or taxes. Uh, which leaves little to nothing left over for unsecured creditors. So you'll come out of a 13 paying maybe 5 to 7 percent your oh, unsecured wow. creditors. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, but the 13 is really uh, necessary to cure the default on a home loan. Okay? And we still do that. Okay? We, we'll, we'll put them into a 13, they'll make all their 13 payments for a year, and then uh, we may do a loan mod. Right? Mm -hmm. or we may go to Don and Gino and say, hey, Let's see if we can get these people alone, right? Right, and mm -hmm. we'll pop them out of the thirteen, yep. 
and we'll, we'll pop them into a seven, get them a home loan, turn it around, throw them into a seven, get rid of the rest of the debt, yep. and they're on their way. So there's lots of different scenarios, different strategies that one can, can implement if the clients are willing to listen to their professionals, me as the conductor of the orchestra, and, uh, and, get, and get through the process. All right. Great stuff. Because if you're starting a business, building a business, want to restructure your business, or if you have debt and you're trying to figure that out or you're about to lose your home, you have a lot of answers for them. I love that. Yeah, there's lots of resources. Yeah. But you look for those resources. You have a lot of experience, which is key. I know when, when our competitors try to compete with us, it's like they just don't have enough tools in their arsenal. They just don't. Right. They don't have the experience. We've seen it all. We've seen more. Quivers in your bow. Yes. We've seen so many, you know, cases that we kind of go, this worked for this, this worked for you. This is how we can help you because we've seen this before, mm -hmm. just like you have. So, again, how can they get a hold of you, Lou? Uh, Esbenlaw.com. Has been law. Has been is E as in Edward, S as Sam, B as in boy, I as in India, and as in Nancy. Law dot com. Has been law dot com. Uh, Lewis L O U I S at has been law dot com. Uh, six six one two five four five zero five zero. Always there great having you part of our show, Lou. Thanks, guys. Great advice and great information, fun. and always good to see our buddy. Yeah, enjoy your uh, the rest of your day off on Saturday, right? All yeah, right, sounds there good. We, go. we right. got another half of the show coming up here, and I think you'll like the young man coming on here, dynamic Mr. Taylor Kelstrom. When we come right back to the Don and Gino for the Satan Finance Show.